Welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith and today we are going on an adventure to Orlando to meet up and get trained by the one and only George Palayo. $500,000 earned in a year. That's ridiculous. He's only like 28, I think. So he's about my age, 500 grand. We're gonna go see him. Let's do this. with Patrick McDavid. Um, it's a multi six figure income. The best thing is he has a brand new 488 Ferrari. <laughs> Very humble, a lot of knowledge. You're gonna get a lot of knowledge. Make sure you get uh, uh, paper, pens. Make sure you write a lot of notes. He's uh, one of the chairman council, top position in the company. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, is also our upline. So he's the upline of oh, the great, great, great. So you're gonna hear from the one and only George Palayo. <laughs> Every successful person has the same amount of time. You know how you look at like a CEO or you look at like a Michael Jordan or you look at like a, um, a senator or a president and you look at all these successful people Guess what? They are no different than you. They have the same amount of time as you. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to start accepting that. Like, they have the same amount of time as me. They don't have any more time than me. And so if they get somewhere that I don't get to, or they accomplish something I don't accomplish, most of the time it's because of why. Successful people invest their time. Unsuccessful people spend their time. Successful people invest their time. Unsuccessful people spend their time. So an investment has to produce a return. So they invest in something that's going to produce a return for them. And... The difference on what happened for successful people, they say there's three dates in your life. The day you're born, the day you die, which you don't decide those things. But the third one you do, which is the day you decide. Every successful person had a date where they said, enough's enough. I'm, I'm done making excuses. I'm done being average. I'm done. I'm so done. That for me was July of 2007. I've been in the business for two years and I said, that's it. Patrick does a meeting. He said, you're five years away from being free. I said, can I focus for five years? For all my dreams to come true for the rest of my life, you're telling me I couldn't focus for a five-year period? I couldn't go on a five-year run in my life? And I said, I'm going to go on a five. And I said, that's awesome. I've been in the business for two, so I got three years left. And then he says, but not five years of being in the business, five years from the day you decide. And I'm like, damn it, that means I got five more years because I haven't done anything for the last two years. I've been in the business for two, but I haven't done anything for two. But I made a decision that day. I said, five years from today, I'm going to be financially independent. When that July came of 2012, we had accomplished a goal. Man, five years is nothing. Guys, what's five years? For the rest of your life, what's five years? What's three years? Nothing. It's gonna go by anyways. The only question is, are you gonna to commit to really invest your time? Are you gonna to commit to the things that are, are productive? Are you gonna to commit to growing, to learning? Or are you just gonna let the time go by? How much time in your life have you let go by already? Way too much. This young man yesterday, he says, you know what, every time I get disappointed, every time I get disappointed, I just, you know, I realize that I just, I just don't come to the office. I'm just down, I'm, you know, I'm disappointed. I said, I feel really bad for you. He says, why do you say that? I said, because that habit's gonna get worse over time and you're not gonna become successful in life. 
He said, why would you say that? I said, listen, if you do that for 10 years, do you think it's easier to change or harder to change? Harder to change. I said, you're building a habit that's going to become harder to change in the future. This young man comes into my office on Tuesday night for an interview after we're done with BOM. And he sits down. And I said, so, you know, energy's kind of low. So I'm trying to get to know him. I'm like, dude, what did you want to do with your life? Anything you wanted, like, what did you want to be? He's like, I want to be a professional soccer player. I said, oh, that's cool. Okay. I said, are you good at soccer? He's like, yeah, I'm okay. His friend's like, no, he's really good. I said, okay, cool. Um, and then I said, so what, 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 what do you, what'd you think? What'd you think? And he says, you know, I'm just not at that point yet. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? So I ask him, I'm like, what is that point look like? He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, what do you mean? I don't know what you mean. You said it. <laughs> he says, I'm just not at that point. And I said, well, what has to happen for you to get that point? And I said, most people only change when things are, are really bad, when they hurt enough. He says, yeah, you're right. I said, so then you're responding. You're a responder when life, you know, gets, then you work and you get serious, but then you're, so you're always responding. You're not initiating, you're responding. And I, this is something Patrick talks about on Dream Team. And I said, I asked him a question. I said, how do you make decisions? Because we all make decisions certain ways. So I asked you, how do you make decisions? How do you make your decisions? What's your system for decision making? Anybody? So he says, my decision making is, I, I, is, is it good for me or bad for me? I said, I don't think that's your decision making process. He says, so, what do you mean? I said, do you think getting, uh, helping people, you're already licensed, do you think helping people, making extra money and doing something for yourself, is that good for you? He says, yeah. I said, then well, why wouldn't you do it? Because you just said it was good for you and you make decisions. If it's good for you, you do it. So now he's just like, <laughs> you can't say anything. And I'm just like, <laughs> I said, here's how I make decisions. I'm going to help you. I weigh all the advantages and disadvantages. And if those advantages are more than the disadvantages, I do it. Two, I ask people who are more successful than me for their opinion, and I'm coachable to that opinion. If you're making two, three million, and I'm making $100,000, there's something you're doing that I'm not doing. So I'm going to borrow your opinion, your way of thinking. And I said, so let me ask you, do you, like, do you, do you think that the reason that you didn't go pro is because of that same reason? Because you're a responder? That's a hard question to ask somebody because that was his dream to be a soccer player. I said, do you think that's why you didn't accomplish your dream? Some of you guys are afraid to say that, right? And I said, before you get upset with me, don't get upset with me because it's not me asking you. I'm just a mirror today. I'm just a mirror mm -hmm. and I'm just reflecting your life to you. So don't be mad at me. <clears throat> I'm just a mirror. Do you think that? This is what he does. I'm, I haven't seen this happen. Sign me up right now. Sign me up right now. Let's see how he responds to that because it, 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 it hurt. Because that's the reason he didn't go pro, because he didn't give that his best either. Now he's not going to give this his best. He's casual. He's casual about everything he does. And so he says, sign me up right now. I said, I'm not signing you up right now. I don't even know if I want you. Some of you guys don't talk about takeaway. You don't take it away from people because you think you're trying to manipulate people. The reason that you, don't take, the reason that you think that's a script, because I used to think like, oh, that's a good script. I'm going to say that. The reason that you think that's a script is because you're not 100% committed to this business yet. Because if you gave this everything you have, you wouldn't have anybody waste your time. But we're okay with people wasting our time because most of the time we're wasting our own time. So we don't confirm guests stronger. We don't confirm field trains. We don't act. We don't expect commitments with clients because we're not bringing the best to them. Why would we expect their best to us? I'm just telling you, when you bring your, when you're at, when you, when you know this business and you bring your best to a family, to a field train, you give your best, you expect business. When you're kind of messing around with the business and you go out there and you do it and you're not really sure, you're not a professional, you don't expect the outcome. So that's why you don't get the outcome. Because whatever you expect in life, I will tell you, whatever you really expect in life, your real expectations are always met. Not your desires, because there's a lot of things you want, but your expectations are always met. So I said, I don't even know if I want you in my business right now. I said, you just said no, now you said yes. I said, you're bipolar. <laughs> and I said, but I'm bipolar too, so I'm working on it. You know, I get it, I understand, up and down, I get it. I said, you're making a decision right now based on your feelings. A minute ago you didn't feel like doing it, and now you feel like doing it, so you only do or don't do it when you feel like doing something. I said, that's why you're unsuccessful. I said, because serotonin and dopamine decide your life. Two, feelings are chemicals, you guys. If, it's a, if, if the chemicals are released, you're like, ooh, I'm excited, I'm happy. If the chemicals aren't released, you're like not happy, you're depressed. 
I can't decide what I'm gonna do based on how I feel. Because most of the time I don't feel at my peak state. So I have to learn how to put myself in this, this way of thinking. And so I said to him, I said, tomorrow morning, I said, let's just say I sign you up right now. Tomorrow morning, you're gonna call me, you're gonna ask for a refund for your 199. And I'll give it to you because we don't want the money. We'll give it back to you, no problem. But you're gonna waste my time. And you're gonna waste your time. Do you think you're gonna feel like doing this more or less tomorrow? He says, probably less. I said, what about the next day? Less. I said, so over time, you're gonna feel like doing it less. So you're probably gonna do it less. You're probably gonna quit. He's like, you're probably right. I said, you let feelings control your life. And I said, so what do you wanna do? He's like, I wanna think about it. I said, do you understand what you just said? I'm not ready. Sign me up right now. I want to think about it. I said, who's challenging you in the way that you're thinking? You're, you're, you're who you are. He says, nobody. I said, I could tell, bro. I said, this, you need to do, you know, you know why you need to do this? Because this environment's good for you. I said, you're going to sign up tonight and tomorrow you're not going to call me. And you're going to do this for three months. And if you decide to do it after that, beautiful. And if you decide not to, that's okay too. You can just give us referrals. But you're going to sign up and you're going to do it for three months and you're not going to quit. Deal? Deal. Sometimes you gotta talk to people like that. We're afraid, well, you know why we're afraid? I told Ruben this the other day. I said, Ruben, why don't you drive the guys harder? I said, I'll tell you why, because you're afraid they're gonna quit. You know why I stayed with Patrick? Because Patrick had such a high standard for me that he wasn't willing, he wasn't afraid of losing me. That's why he was able to lead me. You can't be afraid of losing somebody and lead them at the same time. But he was able to lead me, why? Because he was leading himself. I've never met a better leader than Patrick, till today. I, know, I haven't, I just haven't. You gotta work on yourself, because guess what? Saturday, uh, Tuesday night, I'm thinking about my meeting after the meeting, and I remember being in meetings after the meeting with Patrick, where the meeting was lit. Like, we were like, it was, man, we got sold a dream and the vision every Tuesday night. Every, every Tuesday night, every Saturday, we got sold a dream and the vision. And he was so serious about where he was going. Monday mornings, I would have to drive three hours to Patrick's office. I, traffic, everybody, we got hundreds of thousands of people driving to L.A. So it's two, three, four lane highway, hundreds of thousands of people going to L.A. Because we live in the desert, L.A. So it would take me five o'clock and I get to his office by eight. Three hours every Monday. Almost every morning, actually. It would be like two hours. Monday was three because we started early, and every other morning was like two, two and a half hours. I did that for four years. My first two years, I only made $24,000 combined income. Okay? We're at $50,000 for the month. My first two years, only made $24,000 combined income for two years. And so, why did I keep going to meetings? You ever notice why people in Amway, they make it in the business, but they don't make any money? but they're fired up about Amway? Why? Two words, why? Huh? No. Personal development. That's it right there, personal development. Amway every single day, you got a CD of the day, week, uh, book for the week. Like you go to their meetings, you're buying books, you're buying CDs. I remember going to Patrick's meetings and every single week, if you had a guest, there was a CD and it was Jim Rohn or Brian Tracy or, or, or Art Williams. And you, you had a guest, you got the CD for the week. You didn't have a guest, you could buy the CD for a dollar. But all of a sudden, you got, you're inside their car. See, the moment you turn on your car, whatever's in your CD player, your phone, you have to go look for it. Whatever's in the CD player plays automatically. And every single week, I was working on my mind. I was working on my mind. So I knew I was growing as a person and I was learning these things. I just wasn't applying everything I was learning. And so I'm like, okay, I gotta start. I know what I gotta do, I just have to start doing it. I have to start applying it. And that leads to point number three, which is you have to start today. You have to start today. Whatever habit you want, you gotta start it today. Like, I don't mean tomorrow. I like, how many of you guys wanna be in better shape? You gotta start today, and here's a, or if you said, man, I wanna read more, you gotta start today. Or you know what, I need to, I need to prospect more. You gotta start today. Whatever you want to be or do or have, you have to start today. A lot of people don't start today. And here's the reason they don't start. They're waiting for the perfect time. They're waiting for the perfect time. You know, people will make this excuse. Like, I'm traveling right now, I don't have, I don't have workout shoes. So I can, I can make the excuse of what? I can't go work out, I don't have workout shoes. <laughs> 
Is, do you need workout shoes to do jumping jacks, push-ups, sit-ups? You don't need workout shoes to do that. You could do that. You don't, I don't have a gym. Do you need a gym to do 100 jumping jacks? See, a lot of us are waiting for this perfect moment, and we have very, very bad small habits. It's not the big things that you fail in. It's most of the time the small things you fail in. And so when I say start today, I mean like start a habit, but start a habit that you can consistently c c uh, uh, keep up. So like if you're like, if, if you want to start reading more, start a habit where you read for 10 minutes and say, I'm going to read for 10 minutes for the next five days. If, how many guys read at least 10 minutes a day? Be honest. Don't raise your hand because we don't, this is not about judging. This is about us getting better. And if you're going to lie to me at the end of the day, you're only lying to yourself. How many of you guys at least read a book every single day, no matter what, for 10 minutes? Raise your hand. One, two, three people. Isn't that amazing? We didn't say how many guys read for 30 minutes, how many guys read for an hour and a half. We just said how many guys read every day for 10 minutes. What do you think would happen if you, if you started reading every single day for 10 minutes? Do you think that would help you? None. Just start with 10 minutes. Can everybody do 10 minutes? Can we do 10 minutes? Yeah. We may not be able to do a half hour right now. Maybe your focus level is not a half hour focus, but you can do 10 minutes. How many guys you, you how many guys work out every single day you work out? Every day. Three people. <laughs> Two of you, I believe. I don't know about no just joking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 three people. Okay? Could we all work out for ten minutes a day? Can we wake up in the morning and say, I'm gonna do 10 jumping jacks, I'm gonna do five push-ups, I'm gonna do a couple sit-ups. What if we built a habit of 10 minutes? I'm at the bank right now, interesting meetings. Like, you know when you're like just, when you're just excited about life, people feel that, people feel your energy. And so I'm at the bank and I'm just like, hey, how you doing brother, good to meet you, nice to meet you. And we're sitting down, he's like, man, you got great energy, what do you do? I said, oh, I do insurance and annuities. He's like, oh, nice ring. I said, oh, thanks man, with this, you know, the company gave it to us, blah, blah, blah. Cool, man, what do you do? Like, and I'm like, oh, and I, I said it earlier, right? And we're just talking. I'm trying to get a wire done. And like, I'm literally like, he just wants to keep talking to me. And I'm like, yeah, 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 that's awesome, bro. Like, then he's like, he told me about, he's like, he was married. He went through a separation. His wife had five, this just happened to make, he had five, five step kids that weren't even his that he was raising that now he's taking care of. Uh, that's how he came. He also found church. He found God. He was Buddhist. He grew up. His his dad was a pilot for Michael Kors. That's how he got his citizenship. They have dual citizenship in Miami. Um, he speaks French. Uh, he's, he's, he's Asian. His mom's Asian. His dad was born in Bethlehem. His mom, his grandma, he told me about his grandma and his great grandma, where they were from. This just happened right now at the bank. Wow. I'm just trying to get a wire, bro. <laughs> And we start talking. He, he does a guy's ministry, a jail ministry. He loves Jesus. He's in shape. This dude's in shape. Good looking dude. I'm like, man, I got I to gotta He He prospected himself. This is my car. This is my number. Call me when you're in town. If you're ever in town, call me. He's like, if you're in town on Tuesday, we do a men's breakfast. A hundred men. Call me. Here's my cell. I'm like, awesome, bro. I'm going to introduce you to David. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I'm at the airport. I'm like trying to buy a portable charger because my phone dies all the time. And I'm like, man, you know, you got a good personality. She's like, yeah, I just got my master's degree in education and administration. And did it. And I'm like, wow, what are you doing here? She's like, well, I just wanted to break for a minute. And, but I'm really open to doing something else. I played uh, semi-pro basketball. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I have a great people. Yeah, I keep my options open. Here's my number. When you have great energy, people just do that. Listen, start today. If you're not a good prospector, start today. How many guys? How many guys watch this? Watch this, and I know we want like this amazing advice when we come for training, but we just let's keep it real. How many guys get two numbers every single day? Every single day, you get at least two numbers. Keep your every single day. I'm gonna go get a top twenty-five. Okay. How about we just get two a day? Every day, and then we can get it to three. But let's start something. Start what? Today. today, start today. And I don't just mean in business, start saying I love you more to your family, if, if that's it. Start telling your kids, you know what, I'm going to compliment my wife, my kids, my husband. My, uh, you know what, my last phone call tonight is going to be to such and such, my mom, my dad, my wife, my kids, wherever I'm at, no matter what. Yesterday I'm with uh, uh, Ruben and he says, no matter where Esther's at at 7.30, every single day she calls her grandmother. If a nine-year-old can do that, you don't think a 39-year-old can do that? A 28-year-old can do that? You don't think you can do that? You have to start things and you have to know that when you develop a ritual, 
you do that ritual every day, whether you feel like it or not, because it becomes a ritual. It's a ritual for you. Rituals happen regardless of how you feel. Mm -hmm. Successful people have successful rituals. They do things a little bit different, not that much different, a little bit different, but they do it a little bit different all the time. So you have to start today. Number four, manage activities. Manage activities. There's three things that make us money in our business. We know what they are. What are they? Prospecting, phone calls, and running appointments. The greatest discovery I had after two years in the business was I wrote down my week. And that week I spent, wasted, not spent, or spent and wasted. That week I spent and wasted like 40 hours. I, I literally wrote it down. What did I do? What time I woke up? What time I got to the office? What time I, how many calls I made that hour? And I found out, like, oh, I talked to David for 15 minutes. I talked to that guy for another seven minutes. Went to the bathroom for five minutes. And I was like, man, that hour, I just lost 37 minutes that hour. Do you know how easy it is to lose a half hour out of every hour? You know how easy it is to lose 10 minutes out of an hour every hour because we have more, we just, oh my gosh, it's so easy. Well, you lose 10 minutes out of an hour every hour, that means that every six hours you just lost an hour. That means if you're awake for 12 hours a day, you just lost two hours. If you, that's only spending 10 minutes. You spend 20 minutes, you just lost four hours out of 12 hours, which means you're losing 33% of your time awake. I go through with my guys and I said, hey, you know what, our bad weeks, my guys are like, you know what, my week one and my week three are really bad. I said, you know, if you lose one week a month, like let's say you're the first or the seventh, you have a bad week, that's how many bad weeks a year? If I have one bad week a month, 12 bad weeks a year, what's 12 divided by four? I lose three months. Let's say that I take off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Because most people after Friday night after work don't do anything, they don't come to the office. Saturday after BOM they don't do anything, and Sunday they don't do anything typically. That's three days uh, a month, a week, right? Yeah. How many days a month? 12. 12 days a month. How many days a year? Mm. 144. What's 144 divided by 30? Four months. Guys, it's very simple. Successful people don't become successful because they don't manage their activities. You just have to ask yourself, is this what successful people do today? Would I be doing this if I'm successful? I remember I was listening to Darren Hardy, and Darren Hardy said something. He says, whatever you want to make per hour, you have to do activities that produce that per hour. And he says, but you got to know what you want to make per year first. And I said, okay, well, let me do the math on this. He says, whatever, if you have 50 weeks a year, let's say you take two weeks off for vacation, you have 50 weeks a year, and you have uh, 50 weeks a year times 2,000 times 40 hours a week. So 50 weeks a year times 40 hours a week. So 50 times 40 is what? 2,000. Right? So he says, whatever, if you divide your income by two, I want to make 100,000 divided by 2,000 hours, I have to make 50 per hour. If I want to make a quarter, so how many guys want to make 100,000 this year? What's 100 divided by 2? 50. 50. So every hour you have to make $50. <coughs> you guys know that, right? In order to make 100,000, you have to make 50 an hour. How many of you guys want to make a quarter million? That's 125 an hour. Half a million is 250 an hour. A million is $500 an hour. So let's break that down. If I want to make $50 an hour, how much is 15 minutes of my time? $12.50. So every time I waste 15 minutes, I just wasted $12.50. So when I started wasting a half hour, I was like, I just wasted $25. I just wasted 25 bucks right now. So if you waste three, four hours a day, how, many, how much are you wasting a day? A hundred bucks. You do that every day, that's $3,000 a month you're wasting. So then I started doing things and I would be like on my computer and I was like, I want to make a hundred thousand an hour. And they're like, you have to ask yourself, would you pay somebody 
$50 an hour to do that activity. So I'd be like on my computer checking my email and Darren Hardy would be in my voice in my head and he'd be like, would you pay somebody $50 an hour to check email? I was like, hell no. <laughs> I close the computer and I go make calls. And then I'd be doing something else and he'd be like, would you pay somebody $50 an hour to be wasting time on Facebook? Nope. So be intentional. So I started realizing I have to manage my activity. I have to manage what I'm doing. Number five. Good decisions compound. Good decisions compound. Good decisions compound. Guys, it's not what you do one day. It's what you do every day. People can go get 10 numbers in a day, but then they won't talk to anybody for two weeks. The other guy that's just getting two, three numbers a day every single day is getting it done. People will like, I'm going to go on a fast today and drink shakes all day, and you know? And then they go eat a hamburger at the end of the day. Like, it's not what you do sometime. It's what you do all the time. So you've got to know good decisions compound. So ask yourself, is this getting me closer to my goals or taking me further away? This decision, whatever I'm doing right now. Is watching this on TV getting me closer? And you've got to make changes that are also realistic. How many of you guys watch TV at night? Be honest. Some of you guys didn't raise your hand and you smiled. That means, you, that means that's you. Okay. So, if you're going to watch TV and you're like, I'm not going to watch any TV. Do you think that's really going to happen? That's not going to happen. You know what you have to say? I'm going to only watch 30 minutes of TV. Or I'm only going to watch an hour of TV. You have to limit. You have to be honest with yourself. When you're going to make a change, say you're going to change something and really change it. So make changes that you can keep your word on. And start with small changes because good things compound. Number seven, track. No, was it six? six? Number six, track. 168 hours. You have 168 hours in a week. Track it. That's why you're successful in this room or you're unsuccessful in this room. It's how you spend your time. Because every successful person has the same amount of time. Track it. For once in your life, track how you're spending your 168 hours. And so we started paying attention to how many prospect calls, appointments we were doing per week. I'll give you an example. Who's, uh, who's full-time in the business in the room? Okay, we'll use you. Okay. What did you do last week? How many prospects? I would say, um, I would say probably 15. All right. So I always say you can get three prospects per hour. So that's five hours of prospecting. How many calls did you make? Um, 25. You can make 25 calls in an hour, so that's one hour. And how many appointments did you do? Um, I one. Like scheduled appointment or actually did? How many appointments you ran? Field training, RI, fast start? Zero. You didn't do any appointments? No. Are you really full time or are you? Well, no, I, I am. I am full time, but I don't. I haven't. Uh... Okay, should I have you? Should I use somebody else? Yeah. This is Go ahead. Use somebody. Right? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I can't even help but laugh right now. I'm trying not to. <laughs> it was a bad week. Okay. No, no, no. Bad week is not. This is not a bad week. This is like you were on vacation last week. <laughs> I'm being very serious. Yeah. Six hours. Listen, you had 168. How many hours do you sleep a night? So that's set 42. So you have 126. Okay. What else, What did you do the rest of the time? Um, I would say, okay, I spent two hours with my mom in the morning every day. So um, that would be 14 hours. Is there? Is it just like family time? Yeah. Is she okay, healthy, or is she going? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just have coffee in the morning. Let me ask you this. How much are your bills every month? A thousand? That's why you're lazy. I didn't mean to say that. It just came out. It just came out. <laughs> um, listen, I picked on her, but the rest of you guys aren't that much. Like, I can go through this with everybody. Mm -hmm. Guys, my, my overhead? Everybody's like, oh, what a nice Ferrari. It's 4040 a month. $50,000 wow. down. My insurance is $650. So my Ferrari is $4,650 per month to drive a Ferrari. What a nice, it must be nice to retire your parents. Yes, yes. 
Yes, my just my dad's car alone is eleven $1 hundred dollars a month, not including the cell phones that are another three four hundred bucks, not including the insurance. My insurance bill every single month for all the cars, the house, and everything like that. I'm talking like two thousand dollars a month. Okay, my my house, the projects that we have. In the last two weeks, I had to give thirty thousand dollars to one of the houses we're building. I got another fifteen thousand dollars to do every month on the first. I have an assistant that I pay for. That's my sister that came and asked for a raise the other day. <laughs> She's like, I deserve a raise. I said, you do. Just pay yourself it. Whatever you want. Since I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> she gets she gets paid very good money for. <laughs> she gets paid very good money. She's my sister. I'm gonna take care of her. My overhead is twenty five thousand, thirty thousand a month, easy. Wow. To take care of everybody you love and to build things and be reinvesting and guys, this is real. People want to be like, man, it must be nice to be at the top. Yeah, but it's also responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, we have an amazing life. I think the last did I talk about England last time I came? Mm -hmm. I, t I told the story about England. No. No. I did not tell it here. So we went to Europe. We went to Europe for with the whole Greece contest and. So I took my mom to Paris, we went early, then we went to Italy, and then we went to Greece for the, with the company. We were gone for two weeks. So when my brother, uh, him marketing director, he says, hey, as a celebration, I'm going to Scot Scotland, you should come. And I said, I said, Pop, I just came back from Europe for two weeks. I can't go to Scotland. Like, I just can't, bro, I got to work. And he's like, all right, Pop, you know, all right, I understand. You know, sad, like, like, like a kid, right? Like, okay, dad, you know? And uh, so I called my sister that day. I said, hey, tomorrow you have the day off. She said, oh, really? That's so nice. I said, yeah, book tickets. We're flying to England. She's like, you're so stupid. <laughs> I said, no, 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 book tickets. We got to get two tickets to England. So we fly to England the next day. I find them on a Life360 application, which is a family application, so you can track your family. So if you got kids, <laughs> a spouse, what are you doing? Right? Like, Where are you at? Why aren't you home yet? Right? Um, and so I find him in England. I tracked him on a cell phone. And I walk inside the restaurant in England and I said hey can I get you something to eat and he just starts crying okay? we hang out that night we have an amazing time we go party all this stuff hang out the next day then we fly back and they're like did you really go fly you know 40 to uh, 28 hours to go to see him for a day I said yeah that's what we did guys listen life is very short I'm not going to take anything with me I'm not going to take any of the properties I'm going to leave my kids hopefully my spouse set up financially I want to build a big legacy and all that but I also want to live right now. And like, so I have to work very hard so I can also what? Play really hard. Some of you guys aren't working as hard as you can and you're not playing as hard as you can. So what's really the benefit? You're, you're lukewarm. You know that whole story in the Bible where it says, you know, like lukewarm and people are like, where does that come from? Well, there was two rivers that were flowing into each other. One was a hot spring, one was a cold spring. Hot water's good for relaxation and, and cooking and tea and coffee and cold water's good for refreshing and refrigeration and showering. and. But when you put hot and cold water and it's warm, what can you do with warm water? Nothing. Nothing. Some of you are warm in the business and you're wondering why you're not winning. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the truth and you know it's the truth. And here's the problem. You know it's the truth and you tell yourself the truth all the time. That you also some unconsciously don't believe that you deserve to make $100,000 or a quarter million dollars or a half a million dollars. You got to change. If you want to win, you got to change. You got to start tracking the time.